It's been a while since I've done a video on browsers, so let's take a look at the Brave browser today. You've probably heard of Brave already. It's been sweeping the internet as the new, cool, shiny browser that's supposed to be faster and more secure than its predecessors. The easiest way that I found to install Brave is with the Snappy Package Manager. Now, the Snappy Package Manager works a little bit different than most other package managers because Snappy is supposed to be distro independent, so it's going to be available on many different distros. That's one good thing about it, but there's some bad things that I think you should know about first before you install Snappy and before you use it to install Brave. So apparently with Snappy, you are not able to turn off auto updates for software, which creates a huge problem for stability and potentially for security because your apps are just going to update on your own whenever you restart them. And this creates some of the same problems that we see in Windows, where it's annoying to not have control over your software and when it updates, things may break, especially in experimental distros, since the updates are automatic and this means automatic breakage. And we are completely dependent on the developers of Snap, which is canonical, and the developers of Brave to make sure that no malware or security holes or privacy holes arrive in the upstream. Because if something like that does pop up, it'll be synced to everyone's systems, which is a huge problem, especially in something like a web browser. Also, the server side of Snap is not open source, so there's really no way for us to be entirely sure what's going on there. So I completely understand if you don't want to follow the rest of this video, I'm just going to do it anyway so that I can experiment with Brave and hopefully I can figure out how to build Brave from source and show you guys how to do that as well so we don't have to deal with any of this spooky nonsense. So anyway, go ahead and install snapd with sudo apt install snapd. And then when that's finished, we can install Brave with sudo snap install Brave. And when that's finished running, you're going to have to log out and then log back into your session. You don't have to restart, just re-log. So go ahead and pause this video, re-log, and then we'll continue with using the Brave browser. And here we are in the Brave browser. The home screen kind of looks like Bing, which I guess is pretty cool. Now, you may be wondering, what is all this hype about Brave anyway? Well, basically, it's the most privacy-respecting browser that normies can use because it's tuned for privacy right out of the box. There's no add-ons or anything like that that you have to configure in order to block ads and trackers. Brave does that right out of the box. It also upgrades HTTP HTTPS uh, by default. And to give you a quick TLDR of what that means, HTTPS is essentially what allows encryption whenever you are browsing the web because it's HTTP, the typical service for web browsing, over a secure connection. That's where the S comes in, like TLS. But sometimes a website or even your entire browser will be configured to use an outdated version of that security that has known vulnerabilities. So Brave disables that by default and it actually enables the HTTPS upgrades so that any website you go to, it's going to try to make that website use the newest version of HTTPS that it supports. Now, let's get into some of the more nitty-gritty features of Brave. So you know most browsers have an incognito mode that you can use. In Chrome, you can do this with Control-Shift-N, and you can do the same thing in Brave. But you also have the function of using a private window along with the uh, Tor proxy or the Onion Router proxy. And we can do this with Alt-Shift-N, to spawn the Tor window. So it tells me that I'm using a private window with Tor enabled. And it also switches your search engine to DuckDuckGo. Um, that's not Brave's default search engine, by the way, at least not on uh, my system. It was configured to be Google. But when you switch to Tor, it goes ahead and changes it to DuckDuckGo. So if I were to search uh, what's my IP on DuckDuckGo, when we have Tor enabled, 
we can see that um uh actually let me do it on device info because it doesn't show it automatically in DuckDuckGo. And I'm also gonna show you guys some other things on device info. Once this loads, it's gonna take a little while since we're going through all of the uh, Tor proxies. So now that the website is loaded, you can see that it has successfully changed my IP address. It knows that I'm on a Tor relay, but that's fine. That's generally uh, easy to identify. And it thinks that my region is uh, Quebec, or I guess it thinks that my city is Montreal, but it's not. I'm actually in America. So we can see that the uh, Tor relays are successfully working. Now, I'll give you a word of caution in case you want to use Brave with Tor to do something illegal, like, I don't know, sell machine guns for Bitcoin. I would bet that this configuration of Tor is not as secure as the Tor browser itself, which I have open on the left here, uh, especially with how I showed you guys to install it. Since we can't compile from source, this browser probably glows in the dark. It's definitely the spookiest program on my system right now, all things considered. In fact, I can demonstrate to you that Brave, or at least this version of Brave, which I'll show you in case you happen to be using the same one. Uh, this version of Brave is actually not configured to be as secure as a default configuration of the Tor browser. So if we look at uh, deviceinfo.me, I've got one open in a real Tor browser. Let me just resize this so it looks a little bit nicer. I've got one open in a real Tor browser and I've got Brave with Tor running over here on the right. So if we take a look at deviceinfo.me, this website pretty much shows you all of the information that can be obtained from the owner of a website whenever you visit that website. And the first thing that I noticed is the user agent info is different when you're in Brave Tor versus when you're in regular Tor. So what that means is that if you're using Brave to go on to Tor, or if you're using Brave Tor, a website owner can pretty accurately identify that you are using that and that you're not actually using a regular Tor. And it makes it much easier for you to be tracked by bioluminescent government agents. I also noticed with Brave's default configuration that this website is able to fingerprint me more accurately. We can see here on Tor that my, um, my operating system is pretty much spoofed. It's saying that I'm on Windows 10 uh, version 10.0 32-bit, which is obviously not what I'm using, I'm using Linux, but over here on Brave, it correctly identified that I'm using Linux 64-bit. Uh, we can also go down to the canvas fingerprinting, which also, by the way, you see these white uh, lines that I have around on the Tor browser. This also helps to make it harder for someone to figure out what resolution you're using. So it's basically spoofing my resolution as well. Whereas with Brave, they're able to actually determine what resolution I really have the window on. Um, but the canvas fingerprinting is blocked over here on uh, regular Tor. And then if I go over to it on Brave, we see that canvas fingerprinting is allowed. Even though fingerprinting resistance is detected, um, it's not fully blocking this fingerprinting. Now, what canvas fingerprinting is, is it basically creates a 3D graphic or a string of unique text on your screen. Um, but it's invisible, so it doesn't really matter whether it's the text or whether it's the graphic because you're not gonna be able to see it. And basically, this serves as a digital token to uniquely identify you. And it does this by collecting some info that doesn't really change that often in your system. These are things like your CPU, um, how many cores you have in it, your GPU, your resolution, your monitor refresh rate, and the OS that you're using. So we can see on Tor, if we keep on scrolling down, uh, so we go on to microphones, unknown, um, detections not supported by the browser, 
If we do the same thing on Brave, it correctly identifies that I have two microphones connected to my system, okay? If we go down to graphics card, name and driver, Tor has no idea what type of graphics card I have. If we go down to it on Brave, Brave correctly identified that I'm using a GeForce GTX 970. Uh, same thing with CPU. So Tor is spoofing my CPU info. It thinks that I'm on a um, x86 architecture, which I'm definitely not. And it thinks that I only have two CPU cores, which I definitely don't. Now, granted, this is probably because, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Tor only supports two CPU cores anyway. So it's not optimized for a multi threaded use. Um, but again, on Tor, like who cares, right? Like how many tabs and windows are you really going to have open in Tor? It doesn't, it doesn't matter, at least in my use case, whether or not it's able to utilize all eight of my CPU threads. But here in Brave, because it does utilize all eight of the CPU threads, it's, um, if I go to a website, they can cor correctly identify that I'm on an X64 architecture and that I have eight CPU cores. So... You know, in this hypothetical universe where I'm your friendly online machine gun salesman, which I'm not, if you're an ATF agent watching this, please don't raid my house. But, you know, think about it. How many people, if, if you are this hypothetical machine gun salesman, how many people are going to be selling their wares on the dark net using Brave with Tor on Linux with a GeForce 970 and an eight thread uh, CPU and having two microphones connected to their system. Okay, like that really, really narrows down your number of potential suspects. You could probably count them on your finger and toes. So Brave with Tor, it's just not very anonymous out of the box. Anyway, let's take a look at some more uh, normie centric stuff because that's honestly the real reason why I think people would be using Brave. Uh, oh, it looks like I closed it all the way. Did not mean to do that. Let's fire it back up. It also starts up pretty fast. I can say that it definitely, I definitely notice that Brave starts up faster uh, than Chromium does. Not sure if it starts up faster than Firefox, but it's faster than Chromium. So if we go over here to the extensions tab, uh, well actually, let me show you the ad blocking ability first. So we go to a website like Buzzfeed, okay? You can see that it's blocking ads very, very well. It tells you up here how many uh, ads and trackers and other types of spooky stuff that it blocked. So it does good at blocking that junk. I mean, I guess it could be a little bit better. It could just block BuzzFeed altogether, but I don't know, I guess normies like to read this stuff. So if we go back into our settings and our extensions, we could see that there's this interesting extension here, WebTorrent. So what this actually allows you to do is it lets you download and actually unpack torrents directly into your web browser. Now you might be thinking, oh, this is bloat. I already use Qubit Torrent or probably Transmission if you're a really elite nerd, but that's fine. This feature isn't for for you it's for the normies because you know think about it. if you if you have exposure to normies right if you're around normies at work or at school ask them if they know how to download a torrent I bet you five dollars most of them don't and if one of them says uh, aren't torrents illegal then you owe me double because that's what this is for. This is for people that are just not that technologically inclined, people that, you know, if you sent them to go download a torrent, they would feel like it's more of a chore than somebody like us recompiling our entire kernel, right? I mean, if you're a Gentoo user, that's just another day for us. So this is a pretty good feature for normies because I feel like this browser in general is kind of a normie-centric browser. So. Let's get some resource fingerprinting on Brave real quick because we don't like bloat here, you know? Brave has some features that may potentially be bloated, but let's see for real if it actually is bloated compared to Firefox, which I'm sure that's what most of us are using. So let's get an equal comparison. Uh, let's just go to some random website. I don't know, let's go to bing.com. And then let's go ahead and spawn an HTOP. 
and then see what we're using on Brave. So we'll search. All right, so it looks like it's using about 130 megs of physical RAM. And that is, uh, let's see, just 0.8% of the memory in my system. So let's go ahead and get a Firefox opened up and also go to bing.com so it's fair. Okay, put this guy over there. And then uh, how much was Brave using again? Okay, 131. Let's look up Firefox. And Firefox is using 290, holy cow. Okay, so this must be, there, there's only one explanation I can think of for this. This must be a situation where um, Brave goes ahead and splits up into multiple processes. Actually, I'm pretty sure that is what it's doing because Brave, um, Brave is based on Chromium, and if I remember correctly from the last time I used Chromium, it, it splits up into something like four or five processes. So I'm probably going to have to do a more accurate look to figure out which one is bloated. But I'm pretty sure that it's Brave because it's it's got significantly more uh, add-ons like baked right into the system than you can have in Firefox. I think I actually did a video where I showed you guys how to configure a Firefox profile that has pretty good privacy settings without using any add-ons at all. Um, but yeah, to close out this video, I'll just give you my high-level review of Brave. I think it's great for normies, as I've already said, but it still needs a lot of work to be on par with a hardened Firefox profile. Uh, Brave does give us the ability to change its settings, so maybe I can harden it a bit and show you guys how to do that as well. And hopefully I can also figure out how to compile it from source uh, so that I'm not dependent on Snap and I can show you guys how to use it in Gentoo. But that's it for this video, guys. Hope you learned something. Share it with a friend who's interested in using Brave.